Welcome to Electron Line and continuing on with understanding the night sky, let's now talk about constellations. There are 88 constellations that map out the entire night sky. Now, of course, at any one time, you can never see all 88 at the same time because you're always facing different uh, directions of the sky, different times of the night and different times of the year. And also, constellations that can only be seen from the Southern Hemisphere cannot be seen in the Northern Hemisphere and vice versa. The ones that we can see in the Northern Hemisphere cannot be seen by people living far down towards the South Pole. So there's only a certain number of them that are visible to us, but now in all, 88 constellations do cover the entire sky. Now you may say, why do we still need constellations? It used to be in the old days and in, in, in antiquity, that's a hard word to say, um, people spend a lot more time looking at the sky than we do today. Today we have too many things going on. We have television, uh, we have video games, we have all kinds of things to keep us from being outside with electricity and, and enjoying the night sky. But if you go out on a camping trip or you drive through the countryside and you stop and you look up where there's no lights around, it's amazing how many stars we see. And it's amazing that people in antiquity were able to figure out figurines within those stars. So they started grouping stars together and so those became the beginning of our constellations. We've been adding on to them ever since and now 88 span the entire sky. A very famous one is right here, or the, the Orion constellation and as you can see here that may not be apparent by just looking at the stars but when you begin to connect some of these stars so we connect these two right here um, matter of fact yeah let's do that let's connect these <coughs> like these and like that and like that so all of a sudden you begin to see a person this is the belt or the waist of the person the legs the the uh, chest maybe and this can be considered maybe uh, one arm holding up a weapon or a bow and maybe this here may be considered a um, uh, holding up an axe or, or a sword or something like that and all of a sudden you can see that this actually begins to look like a person and so they used a lot of imagination but without television and video games what should you do and so this now became Orion the hunter and to the right of Orion is the Taurus the bull and to the left of Orion a little bit further south if you look in the sky is a Canis Major the big dog, maybe his hunting companion, and so forth. So they started mapping out the entire sky with these constellations. It turns out if you draw like kind of a, a box, a, not a nice even box, but kind of a box around these constellations, you will take up the entire sky. Of course, you have to figure out which stars belong to which constellation, and I think by now they figured all that out. If you think about looking at the sky in the summertime in the Northern Hemisphere, you'll see something called the Summer's Triangle. Three very bright stars that are distinct that form a nice big triangle in the, star, in the, sky, in the sky. Sorry, And the three stars are Vega, Deneb, and Altair. And if you find that big triangle, that helps you find already three of the constellations because Vega belongs to the constellation Lyra, Deneb belongs to the constellation Cygnus, which also is kind of our... Uh, Northern Hemisphere's uh, Northern Cross, and then Altair b belongs to Aquila. If you look further north towards the North Star, um, then you'll see constellations like Ursa Minor and Ursa Major. Ursa Minor, the tip of it, that star is Polaris, the star that's almost directly towards the north. Um, then we have uh, Buddhas and Virgo, two large stars which are part of the, um, I'm sorry, talk about Arcturus and Spica, two large stars which are part of the constellation Buddhas and Virgo. Now how do you find those? Well here I drew uh, kind of the uh, Ursa Major, the Big Bear as we call it. Sometimes we also call it the Big Dipper and it looks kind of like that. It almost looks like a pot if you think about it with a handle like that. And this is the arc of the Big Dipper, Ursa Major. If you follow the arc about one and a half times the length of the arc right here you get to a very a big star a reddish looking star called Arcturus and then if you continue the arc over here you look at a more whitish looking star called Spica. Uh, here is how you find Arcturus and Spica based on the Big Dipper which allows us to find Buddhas and Virgo. In the, in the springtime, right after the winter and begins to be spring, there's some great constellations to be seen kind of all grouped together pretty closely except for Scorpio. I kind of I probably should separate that. Scorpio, the scorpion, is something you can see more in the summertime by looking towards the south. Right there in the middle, called the, where the head of the scorpion is, is a large red star called Antares. 
Some of the constellations here that are visible towards the spring is Cassiopeia, Taurus, Orion, and as the year goes by, the months go by, you can more easily see Canis Major, Canis Minor, Gemini, and Auriga, which contain some of the very big stars, easy to be found. Aldebaran is part of Taurus. Of course, Orion has some big stars like Bellatrix, Betelgeuse, and Regal, Mintaka, stars that can be easily seen. Um, we have Canis Major with the brightest star in the sky, Sirius. We have Canis Minor just to the side with the bright star Procyon, Gemini the twins with the two bright stars Pollux and Castor, and Auriga with the bright star Capella a little bit further to the north. And so you can see that as you begin to recognize constellations in the sky, slowly you'll be a you're able to map out the sky. The, the real advantage of knowing the constellations, recognizing them, is being able to find things in the sky if you want to go out and do some viewing with your telescope. Another interesting thing about constellation is what's uh, probably misunderstood is that the stars in the constellation are not together in space. They look relative to us because space looks kind of like a plain canvas to us, so all the stars appear to be about the same distance, but that's not the case. As an example, if you look in Orion, Bellatrix, a large star here, which forms one of the shoulders of Orion, is 240 light years away, where Betelgeuse is 425 light years away, Mintaka is 915 light years away, and Regal 775 light years. So you see there are various distances from one another. Now these are very large distances. Most stars cannot be seen at those enormous distances. If a star like the Sun was that far away, there would be no way you can see it unless you had a telescope which then implies that these stars are very large stars. These are what we would call red giants, um, except for Regal. Regal might be more like a bluish giant kind of star. And uh, so be because of that, for two things is that the stars are not all grouped together close in proximity. They can be far, far apart from one another. And if they're that far away and you can still see them with the naked eye, they must be very large stars. So, Constellations, do we still need them? We definitely do. It's a great way for us to be able to find things. If you want to tell somebody else, oh, you should take a look with your telescope, look in that direction. Uh, sometimes you can tell them, look in that constellation, look at that third star from the left, and that kind of thing. It's a great way to find things. So, constellations, still very much in use, and 88 cover the entire sky.